Okay, welcome to Technical Tuesdays. I do believe this is episode four, and we're going to look at the Fibonacci series. So, an Italian named Leonardo of Pisa, or Leonardo Pisano, was born in Pisa, Italy, and it appears the Fibonacci was a uh, name. Uh, a nickname given to him after his death. Fibonacci grew up in North Africa and helped to introduce the Hindu Arabic number system into Europe used today. Uh, Fibonacci completed his book in 1202, which explained the elementary school rules we use today for basic maths. Many European mathematicians of his day were persuaded to use his Hindu Arabic system rather than the Roman numeral system. So Fibonacci is credited with discovering a series of numbers which has been used by mankind for centuries. Its use may have started as early as the Egyptians uh, in the early in the design of the pyramids, as well as Renaissance artists. I'm not going to go into how you calculate these numbers. You can Google that yourself. Uh, but you must be aware that they are very important in the world of trading financial markets. Uh, no doubt you have heard of them if you've uh, even studied the basics. The Fibonacci series is present in physical proportions of the human body and many other aspects of life and the universe. There are so many examples of the Fibonacci series occurring in the natural world around us, e.g. in spiral formations in the head of sunflower, the veins in leaves, the formation of shells, uh, in a beehive, divide the number of female bees by the number of male bees, male bees and you'll get a Fibonacci number of 1.618. The Fibonacci series frequently appears in geometry, for example, in pentagons and hexagons in Islamic decorations, and it was used in the design of Notre Dame in Paris, as well as many more recent examples uh, of design and architecture. I actually don't know why the Fibonacci numbers work so well in technical analysis, but I definitely know that they do work extremely well. I probably use the Fibonacci retracement tool more than any other, and in fact, I believe you could identify reliable enough trading levels if this were the only technical analysis tool you used. Uh, it may just be that so many technical traders use Fibonacci because they are so easy to plot on a chart, so they also they, they basically become self-fulfilling. But um, the numbers certainly are important and they do have an effect on price movement. So it's a tool that is worth practicing. It's very simple, but uh, it takes experience to really get to grips with it. Same with everything in, uh, in trading. So how do we locate and use Fibonacci retracement levels in trading? As we've discovered, markets move in trends over periods of time. We've looked at that in uh, previous uh, Technical Tuesday sessions. However, no market moves in a, in, in, a, in a clear straight line. Price drops up and down within the longer term trend. Technical traders use Fibonacci retracements to find support in a bull trend and resistance in a bear trend. Fibonacci retracements are horizontal lines and all technical analysis software has this tool built in. So they're very easy to use. Uh, you join two extreme points, high and low points, basically the beginning and the end of the trend. And the key Fibonacci ratios of 23.6, 38.2, 50%, 61.8% and 100% will appear across the area for this move. All the software these days does it for you. For me, the most important levels are the 38.2 and the 61.8 followed by the 23.6 and then the 50%. Note that I also use the 78.6% Fibonacci level uh, on my charts. It's less important than the others, but I do like to keep an eye on it. Works well as a target, um, although less so as support and resistance. Once that level has been broken, remove the Fibonacci lines from your chart and look to redraw them. Okay, the uh, euro versus the US dollar looks like, like as good an example as uh, any to uh, put my Fibonacci lines on. So this is a daily chart going all the way back to 2015, a couple of years, and you can see for uh, right up until the end of 2016, we were just trading in this big sideways range. Fibonacci levels don't work so well in a sideways range. In, in the end, the, the prices are traded over so many, so many times over this time period that it's very difficult to identify decent levels the longer we go sideways. Anyway, so the Fibonacci's will work initially, and let's actually put that to the test. I haven't done this yet, but let's just see back here um, yeah well that kind of proves the point that they don't really work um, so let's just move along right so when you start to have a trend that's when the Fibonacci levels really come into their own so let's go back to the beginning of the year when this bull trend started January so you can see in the first quarter January February March the euro versus the US dollar started to have a little bit of a rally let's take Let's pretend that we've, we've just topped out in March and we're looking for some support and resistance levels now on, this, on the pullback that we're seeing. So the 23.6% can't say that worked particularly well and we did plunge below the 38.2%. I really should blow this up a bit, shouldn't I? Make it a bit easier to see. That would be a good idea. Okay, 
So we're looking as if we're trading within this period here. Um, so we've got, uh, well, we broke through the 23.6%, which actually did act as a resistance then on the bounce back on this day, as you can see. So there is some credibility in that level, but it didn't work particularly well on the downside. Again, once we broke through the 38.2% Fib level, this also worked as resistance. Uh, so again, not a great support level, but certainly did work well as resistance. Then we went through to 50%. The 50% isn't really a Fibonacci level. It's just something that we put on the charts because it's a significant uh, a number now 61.8% was in at 105.65 where did we get to 105.68 so it looks like is that 65 or 55 let me just check um, so we got to got to within a very close range uh, very close to 61.8% as I said 61.8 and 38.2 are my favorite levels they do seem to work very often 105.55 so okay we bottomed out 13 pips above that 61.8 if you're going to be in a bull trend if you're going to remain in a bull trend this is pretty much the last resort you absolutely have to hold a 61.8 if you fail to hold a 38.2 there is a risk you will trade down as far as a 61.8 and if it doesn't bounce from there then you are no longer well there's a strong chance you're no longer in a bull trend okay so after this dip to the 60 to close to the 61.8 percent the price then really accelerated we had a strong move higher throughout uh, the summer and right until the autumn we topped out in September uh, you, you can see the head and shoulders pattern there we'll talk about those kind of patterns in another episode but I uh, these I've drawn the Fibonacci lines because we've clearly topped out at, in September and there are patterns and all sorts of indicators to show that the euro has topped out and could be turning significantly lower so on this daily chart we take the low uh, in January we take the high in September and now we're setting ourselves some targets and support levels to monitor so the first thing that happened was the uh, pair pulled right back to the 23.6 percent Fibonacci support at 116.78 and hey presto that worked absolutely perfectly 1.1667 so we bottomed out within 11 pips of that support level had a really nice bounce as you can see the 55 day moving average caught that and I'm just wondering if we were to put some fib levels on here give me one second i was just wondering if this bounce back was uh, an important fib level and it wasn't it didn't didn't seem to have any significance at all sometimes they do sometimes they don't but if i show you on here uh, oh she's sorry with the 50 percent did did work so you can see on this on this move down when we bounced we were looking for if we were looking for some fib levels well the 50 percent certainly held uh, to me as i said before the 50 percent isn't a significant fib level but hey it does work sometimes so it did work in this case let's take these off again now, we have broken through the 23.6% Fibonacci support at 116.78, which means the outlook is negative. Uh, I actually do think that we're probably going to bounce back to it and retest it before we go lower. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised to see us trade up around 116.70, 117.00 before. I, th I think we need to uh, squeeze a few of the shorts out of this head and shoulders pattern. It's so obvious everyone knows about it. There's got to be some weak shorts that need to be shaken out before we go down. Anyway, we'll see if that prediction plays out. But assuming that we don't, break the head and shoulders pattern and we do continue lower and this uh, somewhere around 116.78, 117 00 does act as resistance then the market should head down towards the next target which is the 38.2% Fibonacci level of 1.1422. You would expect the market to pause there no doubt will be oversold significantly at that stage uh, but you can see see how these things work they do and, and, and very often they do tie in with previous price action to reinforce the importance of this level so you can see here the peak for June was at 114.45 it's only about 20 pips or so above that Fibonacci support so that whole 20 pip range would be your support level and you often get the moving averages tying in with them as well I don't know how I don't know why it works very coincidental but it adds to the importance of these levels when you get that so there's the 100 day moving average tying in absolutely perfectly with the 23.6% Fib level and as you can see once we broke it we've gone down uh, significantly further and as I say I think we'll probably bounce back to test that so if we were then to start moving below the 38.2%, I would imagine we would move very quickly to this peak up here at 112.85 before we head towards the 200 day moving average and the 50% Fib level. Um, from here, we uh, then the obvious big, big one is the 61.8 down at 1009. That's a heck of a long way away from where we are now, so I can't even begin to imagine whether we would get there or not. But if that were not to hold, well, we'd have already broken all the major. Um, 
moving average levels, and then if we were to break 61.8, you'd, ha you'd certainly have to say, well, the bulls uh, have completely lost control of this market, and the longer-term bear trend has resumed. Thank you.